Hey guys, Greg Bear here of Greg's Halfling Garden Channel. Today's video is going to be kind of a part two. Uh, I did a short like a week ago or so about finding a snowblower on the side of the road and today's video is going to be all about seeing if I can get it to run. We'll see. I mean, so far the tires hold air. It does turn over so the motor's not seized, but we'll see from there. All right, roll the intro. Here she is in all her beauty. A little bit rusty, but so far so good. Transmission shifts just fine. Engine turns over. The choke and all that stuff seems to be moving well. That slides. Everything seems so good so far. Uh, first thing I did, of course, I took the gas cap off and took a peek in there. I'm going to try to get a flashlight in there so you guys can see it, but... Looks like there's a lot of ethanol build up in there. Kind of looks like a bunch of granulated sugar or sand. So let me try to get the flashlight and get a good peek in there for you guys. Looking pretty nasty in there. You know, I wouldn't even doubt if this is all that was wrong with the thing and they just threw it out. I've seen that quite a few times when I find stuff on the side of the road like this. So first thing I'm going to do is flush the whole fuel system out with the hose until I don't see any more of this gunky build up in there. And then go from there. Probably rebuild the carburetor before I fill it up and see what happens. I've got a spark checker too. I'm going to throw that on there and hopefully that'll be it. If it's not, we'll uh, move on from there. But if it is, I'll definitely change the oil because that looks like molasses right now. Fuel tanks always are the easiest thing to remove. It's just these two bolts right here on most rigs like this. So, boom and boom. So, mm -mm -mm. Oh, this is going to be annoying. The fuel line kind of runs through here, underneath the starter, through there. So I'll see if I can get that line out so I can flush the whole thing out before we get going. All right, I'm going to switch angles here. So I'm going to remove this cover that covers the carburetor. And we got small bolts over here, these two Phillips, and another one over here. You know, all this stuff is rusted to heck, so... You know, I'm going to strip something eventually, so... <laughs> now that I got the cover off, just playing around with like the throttle and the governor and all that, I can see everything is a little seized up. Just by like, it's moving super pokey over here, like this should be an instant snap. So I know I have to lubricate all these moving parts around here, which is super easy. So far so good. This carburetor is very easy to get off compared to my other snowblower, which I had to remove like this shaft, I think half of this freaking cover up here, it was totally different. Uh, I know the other one was a Craftsman versus a Tecumseh, so just a little different design. This one so far, looks like all I have to do is take out these two bolts right here and then disconnect the fuel line and that little line will be good to go. So let's get going. So trying to remove these is a little tough. I'm actually going to take the whole tube off here with these torques right here so I can get better access to the one on this side because I can barely even get a wrench on this one and this one's impossible where the angle is. So I'm just going to take this whole thing off. It'll be a little easier that way. reuse this gasket. I don't feel like buying a new one. All right, got that off. Just got to disconnect that. Be good to go. And here we are. Got it off with a little noodling. The uh, worm clamp that was on the fuel line just completely disintegrated. Gasket got a little torn here, so I don't feel like to reuse this or not. But got it off, so I'm going to take the float bowl off. Get all the gunk off and flush the fuel line and get it back together and see what happens. I really hope this full pool gasket doesn't get torn or anything so I can reuse it. It's gonna take 
ever to get this stuff in the mail if I order it. Are we on there? There we are. It doesn't look half bad, honestly. I was expecting it to be really rusty and just full of ethanol and stuff, but I'm pretty impressed with that. Definitely see there's some water in that gas though, so that could be a problem there. Alright, get the rest of this cleaned up and taken apart, and I'll throw the compressed air through it a little bit, get it all cleaned out, and put it back together. And definitely good news, this gasket looks like I can reuse it for sure. Oh, we got that. Oh yeah, everything looks good in there so far. Heck yeah. I'm gonna take this bracket off so I can get in there better and take a look. See if there's anything I need to do in there. what I didn't know I needed these giant Phillips head attachments until I actually bought them they're super handy especially when you get into the stuff that's like a big piece of plastic and there's a hole and you can't fit like an extension piece and all that in there just having this is amazing it was like seven dollars at Harbor Freight for the set so super impressed so far spring back so that needs some lubing up if you know what I mean I'm probably still gonna take this tube off just so I can see the other side see if there's anything in there that needs to be blown out so I tried to pull that whole fuel line through here there's a ton of resistance I don't feel like having to try to string that back through so I'm just gonna flush the whole thing with the fuel line and the fuel tank on the snowblower then take compressed air and throw it through here to get all the water back out and let the fuel tank dry before I put gasoline in. a problem already which is kind of nice but usually when I put water on here the water comes out of the fuel line but it's not so there could be some kind of screen in here that's actually clogged out which could be super convenient super easy towards getting this thing to run so I'm gonna take the fuel line off the bottom and see what's going on there super exciting this tank is about half full of water right now and nothing's coming out of here so I think I found the problem gonna run some compressed air through here and see what pops out the other side. Hmm, that is strange. I can hear it coming out the other side, but nothing came out now. Huh, that's weird. Try something else. Try. We're getting somewhere. There's definitely a clog in there that's getting loosened up now. Let's try that again. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna have to fanoodle with this off camera. This is getting serious. I just spent like 30 minutes on this thing. So for some reason, when it's full and down to about here it'll flow out but after that no matter what I did nothing will come out even when I tipped it like that so there must be some kind of weird baffle in here or something that just restricts the fuel or something I don't know but it works fine when it's mostly full so I'm gonna throw this thing back together and see what happens hopefully I have enough gas to actually fill the tank up so it'll actually flow through to the car
Got the carburetor all flushed out. Low pull, clean, all that jazz. Low pull was super clean, so that's exciting. That moves well. I put some lube on that. That moves like it should now. Uh, I don't have any worm screws for this gas line. So for now, I'm just going to hook it all up and see if it even runs. And see if it's even worth it to go to the store and buy some. So, super easy to put back together, of course. Start off with this little guy here. Took a picture, which of course I'm recording on my phone, so I can't look at it right now. Took a picture of which hole it goes into, because sometimes I forget this and I put it in the wrong hole and that'll mess up you know, the distance it travels and all that. So. I just have to stop recording for a second and look at that picture. Be right back. So, I ended up putting it on this backwards, so I had to take this all back apart, flip it around. I was having trouble with this gasket because there was a little piece missing. So I wanted to do it with two hands and be super focused on it. And luckily I got the piece in there, so there's not going to be any kind of an air gap or a vacuum leak on there. So. Pretty happy about that. Now we just have to reconnect the kill switch onto the carb cover and throw that back on. This was super easy so far. And then I'm gonna take a look at the ignition, get my spark tester out. Covers back on, everything's back on there. Now we're gonna take out the spark plug. See how nasty it looks there. Let's see. Not horrible. Who knows if it's actually sparking or not? Just gonna sand it off a little bit, throw it back in, throw the spark checker in, and see what we got. So here's the spark checker I'm talking about. This goes just in line between your spark plug wire and your spark plug. And based on how it flashes, it can kind of tell you if it's the ignition or the fuel system. So it has a bunch of conditions here. So if the engine doesn't start, but the bulb is flashing, then it's most likely your fuel system. If the engine doesn't start and it doesn't flash, it's the ignition system. If the engine starts, but the bulb isn't at a constant rate, it could be the spark plugs or the ignition coil is bad. And if the flashes don't line up with the RPMs, it could also be the ignition system. So just a couple things to look at here, see what happens when I do the pull cord. Sadly, the electric start doesn't work when I tried it. All right, it's gonna be a little shaky. I'm kind of holding the camera with one hand and pulling with the other. So I'm gonna try to do this. All right, that is a good sign. It's kind of flashing at a constant rate as the engine turns over. And there's no fuel in this right now, so according to that, it is pointing towards the fuel system. So let's put some gas on this now and prime it up, choke it up, and see what happens now that I know there is spark coming through. All right, guys, I moved it outside just in case it actually does start. So, all right, choke on. A little bit of bunny rabbit action, maybe three quarters of that. Give it a few primes. I use non-ethanol treated gas, so. Ooh. All right, flow pole's leaking a little bit. I'll have to look at that later. But, yeah, let's see if it starts. Hell yeah. guys well hope you enjoyed coming along on this journey of trying to fix this snowblower i wasn't trying to make like a tutorial or anything so it wasn't super detailed i hope you guys still uh enjoyed it a little bit that being said if you like this video definitely consider giving it a like if you want to see more definitely consider subscribing to the greg's halfling family become one of my halflings and if you want to stay in the know for all my future uploads turn on that notification bell and make sure it's set the notifications on always and i hope to see you guys all next adventure Greg Bear out.